little fleece uh, nose protector. So people have been asking how I made this and so I'm going to go ahead and give you the best information I can. First of all, when we were at a military outlet store, I didn't see the inside of this, but uh, only the bag that it said extreme cold weather mask. So I purchased it. I forget the term you folks like to use for when you take one item and totally cut it up and um, use it for something else. So this is what's left over. <laughs> And it, the straps went over the head and around the head, and it was very difficult to deal with, in addition to I didn't feel like it worked that great. Anyway, so don't need that part, but I cut out the nose part. I have no idea what they have in the, in the middle of this to make it moldable. Um, I don't know what they've used. I then bought a strip of fleece, which this is another one. I may end up redoing it just so I can do it a little bit better and took that and then sewed it by hand just over the edge of the nose guard that I had worked with putting it around my face. This is the underside of that. You see it's so I, that I had cut around that nose piece. Anyway, so I sewed just along the top and then I cut it it's actually I needed to go a little further which is why I may redo it because it doesn't quite go over my the back of my ears but it hangs around and goes over the ears and for now I've just got it tied but I'm probably going to put velcro on these straps and um, it'll be easier because tying with gloves and untying is not real easy and then as far as the length again like I said my main purpose is to get something over my nose but have an opening under the nose so that I can uh, not fog up my glasses is really the key to have something to wear to keep the nose and the ears warm but also to not have the back of my head covered so I could take my hat off I could take you know the headband off the not have any of this stuff back here on and but for some reason my nose is still cold and just and my ears are cold and so I can cover my nose and my ears so as I said I think with I'm going to leave this to begin with, but over time I will probably cut this shorter so that it, and I will, I may redo it and, and leave the nose part just slightly, a little bit longer. All right, I'm back out to try again. I have uh, made a little change on how I'm wearing the fleece around my face. I can't really see what the camera's seeing, but um, I've pulled my fleece headband. I turned it around backwards for the wider part to be in the front, and I've got it pulled down over my eyes some. I can pull it down more if I need to. And I haven't got my shemag on yet, so if the wind really does pick up out here, then I'll put it on and give it a try. So, it's still under 15, I think, with a wind chill down around 5. This is iteration number 2 of my little fleece nose and ear and now eyelid guard. <laughs> Since I've learned that if I want to not have uh, a full ball of club on in 5 degree, 0 degree with wind, wind chill, then I need something to cover above my eyes. Otherwise, I would have to wear goggles. So, I took the piece, and this is probably going to be cut in some more, but I wanted to make sure I got it beyond my ears this time. And then I took, um, let me turn this over. This is, now this is upside down. Forehead would be up here. Chin would be down here, and this is against my face. And this is the piece that came from the, the little military face mask that I <clears throat> butchered. So the first thing I did was just cut along the shape of this and then I folded it over and I've sewed it by hand right there. And that's what I've done so far. So I'm going to kind of fit it and then decide uh, what to do as far as the hole under the nose. 
which I wanted a little further down actually than I had the other one. And now I've cut out the little slit opening that will be below the nose. And that's what hopefully prevents glasses from fogging. So I'll try that out and then I'll decide how much I need to cut off on the sides. All right, I have the piece folded in half so that I could make it a little more symmetrical this time. And basically, uh, after trying it on, I decided I just needed to cut here because the neck, again, is I've got things to warm the neck. So this is just the face, the nose, the ears, and the mouth, and trying to keep as much open around the back of my head and my back of my neck where I tend to get hot. So let's try it on and see what it looks like. Okay, well here we are with my glasses on. And if I need to pull this down under here to cover down to my eyeballs, I guess I probably could. I may end up cutting a little bit of this off here. And, um, you know, I may end up cutting more down here. Um, if my uh, mouth was still cold around this area, then I've got, you know, my shemag. I've also got a neck gaiter um, balaclava thing that I could use just the neck gaiter part, but my neck tends to get warm when I'm still cold. This is the, the last area. This and my fingertips are my greatest challenge in these wind chills. So here's where I've got it tied in the back. And I may just leave the tie just because um, I just left it tied and pulled it off and put it on. Anyway, this is iteration number two, and I haven't tried it yet, so I may make some adjustments. I may have gotten this slightly lower than I really wanted it, but it'll do. Um, the biggest thing is letting, when you're breathing, out your mouth or your nose that it goes out here, as opposed to going up here and fogging the glasses. So, there it is. We'll give it a try today. It's not as cold today, but I'm sure I'll probably be okay to wear this for a little while. And this is the uh, cut I made. So the strap now is a little bit longer and then I cut out another little triangle section here to get some of the bulk off, the, off of my head behind my ears. And this is what it looks like folded in half. And like I said, I may end up cutting this more narrow, but I'm gonna wait until I've been outside to make that decision. All right, this is my final cut. I made one more cut for the, uh, before I go outside, I have it pulled down kind of over my eyelids. I could pull it up even a little further over here if I need to. Got the opening for the breathing. And then what I did was, um, hopefully I'll have the camera in a way you can see. I cut out a little triangle here. So it's back about a half inch to an inch behind my ear kept it at an angle so that the tie would pull this up and keep it down over the ear. This is where I get hot first when I'm hiking and I start sweating all in here, end up with a soaked head. So I wanted to get that open and yet keep all this covered. Hey there. Okay, it is, uh, I think it's 18, feels like eight. It's much warmer today. And I am definitely cold. I started out with tank top, summer shirt, and my rain slash wind jacket. Hey there, okay, several things have happened while I've been hiking. First of all, I did begin to get hot. What I've done is I, I stopped at a bench and uh, the sun was on it, so it was really warm there, but it's cold back in here and I had a feeling it would be. So I did leave my wind jacket on but I've opened the I have the tank top on so I've opened the shirt and the jacket and kind of made some and I have pit zips on this jacket so I'm cold again and uh, then the forehead was getting hot so what I did is just fold it down over the nose and the ears and the nose would still be really cold if I didn't have this on so we're gonna try this for a while it's probably hit 20 to 21 by now with not counting the wind chill and when that breeze comes it does still make me pretty cold so I think I'm okay right now I don't feel like and I didn't sweat on the back of my head I was about to 
under that fleece around my forehead and caught it just in time. So the hat is, I hate it, I love wearing a hat, so I hate that I can't even wear a hat, but until it warms up, you know, to where you're going to sweat no matter what. But anyway, uh, the hat's hanging there that I can put it on if I want to or when I stop. The shemag is tied around the chest strap. I thought I would have to put it on when I stopped, but as it turned out, it was warm there. And, uh, you know, I was ready to just throw it around my head and neck, but it turned out I didn't need to. Well, I'm a mess, but that's okay. So my forehead was getting cold again, and I pulled up the uh, forehead part back up. I'm definitely going to leave it on there. Um, anyway, I am very happy with this little device. Right now, the only place on me that would be cold is my forehead, my ears, and my nose. And, uh, and the rest of me is comfortable. I'm not getting hot at this point. It's actually cooler than it was. I'm getting ready to go walk up to the top of this hill through some sun, so... Uh, but I'll probably take a break up there for a minute. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, I'm excited. This makes this one of my three favorite gear items for the winter. So, yep, it's working. Highly recommend you make one if you're if you have this same problem. Arnie's getting ready to hike uh, six miles from from Dickey Gap up to the South Holston River. Nice regular trail to start off with. There's our white blaze. Here's another trail. It says uh, Hickory Ridge Trail and the Virginia Highlands Horse Trail being one mile away. So um, <clears throat> that Virginia Highlands Horse Trail goes a long way through Virginia. So. We're starting out from Dickey Gap, headed northbound on the Appalachian Trail. This uphill is not too bad, not quite as steep. Either that or I'm just getting stronger. Don't know why I love hiking so much, but I sure do love it. And it's free. Well, after you spend thousands of dollars on equipment and gear, it's free and drive your car to get wherever you're going and buy all your food and you know <laughs> but you don't have to pay to get on the trail that's something I haven't seen much of lately the Sun making its way up over the mountain it's looking southbound we just came up that hill and uh, Gonna continue up this way, the trail is fine. This is great, it's a trail. <laughs> On the Appalachian Trail, you're always happy when you see a trail <laughs> instead of rocks, climbing roots or whatever. So this will be a blessing. Well, we started at 3291 this morning. We've come up a couple hundred feet and uh, we're on the east side of the mountain. Mountain over there, the sun just came up over it right there. 27 degrees and shortly I'm going to have to take off uh, my fleece jacket. This uphill is kind of nice from the standpoint that uh, it'll go up a while and then it'll give you a little level area for a minute to kind of get your breath and rest and then uphill again. So far that's happened six or seven times so that makes it very helpful. Oh, here's the snow G was concerned about. It's about an inch to two inches deep on the trail. Not at all slippery. I just walked around from the east side of the mountain. Let's see, I was over there. Came around this way to where the sun hasn't been able to get to melt all the snow. So there you go. But it's beautiful. And then you can see the mountain over there. All the snow's melted, so... If you're going to buy property in the mountains, you might want to consider something like that. If you want to be on the sunny side where the snow melts sooner and you're going to be warmer, or do you want to stay where it's really cold and keep the snow on the ground as long as possible? Personally, I'll take the uh, live in the sun and look at the snow across the way.
And as suddenly as we came into the snow-covered trail, we leave the snow-covered trail. <laughs> All right, looks like we're coming up on the uh, where a trail crosses. And this is the Virginia Highlands Horse Trail. What a great place if you have a horse to come out and ride. And I know that a lot of people do. All right, let's get some of these layers off because we're getting ready to go uphill again and I don't want to start sweating. We're at mile 519.8 and uh, I've come upon a little side trail there uh, that will take you to the Virginia Highlands Horse Trail, three quarters of a mile, or the Raccoon Campground, which is probably closed for winter, in three miles. And then Trimpy Shelter, straight ahead, two and a half more miles, so that means we've come up about a mile and a half. I'm moving pretty slow today, but since I only have the six miles, I know that I can do that. and still be okay and I'm just really enjoying taking it easy today. We're at mile 520 and the elevation is about 3835. This is fascinating here for one thing I've come into I'm just about to leave it it looks like but we had to walk through some rocky section but it's not very rocky I mean at this point this is kind of nothing to walk around. The real reason I wanted to take the picture is I'm looking southbound now look at all the downed trees up here starting over here that big one there was got a huge hole in it so look at all of them out there this is over years i mean it's not this year but of the places i've been uh, which isn't that much so far but i mean i haven't seen this many trees down in one place there are just i guess you'd call it dozens of trees down in this area so it's probably not a good place for me to just hang around, is it? <laughs> if it has a tendency to do that, maybe it's time to move on. Well, we've come up about another tenth of a mile to 520.1. We're at 3,855 feet. This is our high point for the day. We are on top of a ridge. There's a few rocks up here. We may be kind of walking along a ridge or near the top of a ridge for a while, but it is going to be a little breezy over here. It's definitely a little breezy here right now, so I can't stay long or I'll get cold. But you see more down trees in this area just continued from when I first showed them about a tenth to two tenths of a mile ago. Uh, I would say they get some pretty good winds through here. That's uh, from the south where we came in, and then we're making a sharp right turn and going to start downhill now. I guess I'm glad I wasn't here yesterday. The winds were pretty strong and I don't know, maybe a 10, 10 to 15 mile an hour gust right now and yesterday they would have been 30 to 35. So I think I'm glad I wasn't up here. And at mile uh, 520.4, uh, about 3870 elevation, and Gut Hooks is calling this an unofficial campsite, which it is a nice smooth area.
wind, we've been notified. We're getting ready to change directions. Even get a little sign because a trail goes straight ahead. Virginia 16 and 650 south, two, two and a quarter mile is at the bottom of the sign. Trimpy Shelter, one and three quarter miles north, and 672, three and a quarter, which I believe is where we're headed. There or just a mile after that. And a little switchback, and downhill we go. That's behind me. And now it's let up again. That was a little bit slow. Had to be careful not to fall. Because if I landed on a rock, I have a feeling the rock would went out against my bones. <laughs> so, careful, careful. Well, I finally come across a rock I can sit on. I took a little mini break here, and now we're going to continue on. The trail itself is still just got a few small rocks on it, and every now and then a larger one. For the most part, though, they've been helpful, especially if there's a little snow on the trail. But I'm having to go real slow and take it easy through here because I don't know what's wet, what's slippery. I just want to make sure we don't take a spill. But I thought it was pretty through here. Cool looking with all these rocks. I think we've got a pretty good view out here. There's a valley down there that uh, we've actually been in. And when you're down there, looking at the mountains all around you, it's absolutely gorgeous. Pretty cool place to live. Oh, we're at 521.1 on miles, 3,583 feet. We're continuing downhill, but we're in the middle of all these trees again. A forest of the gnarly trees. <laughs> no more snow on this side of the mountain, but it's all melted, but uh, slightly damp and a few rocks. Not bad, but it's just different. <laughs> Okay, I want you to check this tree out. It is just waiting for a wind to blow in the right direction. It's dead right next to the trail, but it is definitely leaning away from the trail. Did some animal dig around there looking for uh, bugs, probably. So we're just gonna scoot on by and uh, get away from it. Wow. There are just lots and lots of dead trees in here still standing and so many that are already down. There's another one that looks like it may have come down this year. See a sign for our Trimpy Shelter. So AT North is to our left. Uh, straight ahead Trumpy Shelter. Here's our blue blaze to take us to the shelter. And uh, we're going to go check it out and sit and eat. And we've got about two miles after that to get to the uh, South Holston River, I believe it is, where G will be waiting for us. He was going to originally hike up here and meet me here, but he felt like he had a bit of a sore throat this morning, and he's just, he was so sick. He's just concerned about doing anything that might bring that back on, and, and I'm glad. I mean, I really, I miss him coming out here. I want to see him build up his capacity again. Uh, he was doing so well. He had gotten to where he could do, like, up to about five miles. I feel like he can build up capacity to seven to eight miles in a day, but he might have to rest the next day. So it's really just a matter of not pushing him too hard, which is, again, why we're kind of doing this, so that we can keep logging some miles on the trail, That's what we wanted to do, and now we're trying to hit that 100-mile mark. Having done 100 miles, which we thought would take us about two weeks in the beginning, little did we know, but, you know, we'd never hiked, so ignorance is, well, ignorance is ignorance. But anyway, we still want to keep doing it and uh, get as many miles as we can and he will hike when he can with no pressure on him. No pressure to get out here, no pressure to do a certain amount, no pressure to do a, an extremely strenuous high climb so that he can enjoy what he does do. That's what we're hoping for and it looks like we're coming down to where the shelter is and some people have got some areas to camp here around the shelter. Coming in around from the uh, back side, looks like. 
You see it is a stone structure with a chimney. Got a picnic table in front of it. It's interesting, it looks smaller than I expected it to because it's, it's called a large shelter. And water is uh, to the right down this way. And I guess the privy is uh, somewhere off that way. Well, I'm here at the uh, Trimpy Shelter at uh, mile 522.4. You see the fireplace there, and uh, and there, there's the, uh, I don't know what you call those things, platforms, I guess, where uh, people put their sleeping bags, and another one up there, and then on the other side, same thing. Just really wishing G was here so we could just go ahead and spend the afternoon and the night here. I um, think we'll have to come back and do this section sometime together when he's up to hiking. And uh, it would be a good hike for him and um, good distance for him. And I think it'd be a lot of fun. So hopefully we can do that in the future. But for now, I just thought you might like to see what a unusual shelter looks like. This is not normal. There normally are no fireplaces in the shelters, but um, there is in this one, so that's cool. And uh, somebody's left some wood, uh, small pieces and other over there. Okay, we're back up to the AT where we uh, took the blue blaze down to the shelter. We got about, gonna go about 1.2 miles down, about 400 feet off this way, northbound. And that's going to take us to a road, I believe, called Slabtown Road. We were told by uh, our good friends at the uh, Damascus, not Rogers Outfitters, that that's not necessarily a road we'd want to drive on without a four-wheel drive. So G will not be there to greet me. I'm kind of thinking maybe they didn't see all the roads we did drive on in North Georgia, Forest Service roads that were pretty bumpy. They gave us a lot of valuable information. Lumpy and is it Jeff, the owner, both of them, just tremendous insights and help in planning this uh, Southwest Virginia part of our hike. Told him our story and all about G and the medical issues and what we were trying to do. And they kind of let us know when it probably wouldn't be safe for us to hike because of the weather and when there'd be too much ice on the, on the trail and things like that. And then took out the map and went over all the roads we'd be dealing with. So big thank you to them. Go spend your money there instead of online. <laughs> They're extremely knowledgeable and got a lot of great gear. We're at mile 523. I don't know what this is keeping in or out, but uh, see if I can figure out how to open it. All right, let's try the other side. Forget to close it.
So we've gotten to mile uh, 523.4 per gut hooks. We're at about 2,600 feet. This is what gut hooks calls the meadow, although we've been walking through it here for a few minutes. Lots of mountains around us. And we are down in a little sink, and then it uh, looks like we might have to climb some stairs down there. Well, I know all about climbing stairs, so... Although I do miss having a railing. Okay. Now the funny thing about that is that right over here, we could have just walked through the broken down gate. <laughs> Who knew? And now we're on a, some kind of road for cars, I guess, or four-wheel drive type cars to get up to this property. We're coming up on Slabtown Road, and this actually looks like a very good road. Looks like it's been graded recently. From here, we got a little bit of an uphill and then back downhill to the South Fork Holston River. Going up about 100 and then after that, we start back down. Well, we're at mile 524.1, elevation 2625. We've got about four tenths of a mile and 200 feet down to make it to our trailhead. At some point, we're gonna come around this curve and we're gonna be able to see the bridge across the river and our uh, mylar-lined traveling hospital singing <laughs> that keeps us out here in the winter. Shouldn't be long now. You can see the bridge down there and the trailhead. So, let's head on down there. And what would any day be without at least one little water crossing? But the water's gone down a lot because it hasn't rained the last few days, so probably not as bad as it would have been several days ago. I actually have dry rocks here. All right. But it is water. And we're coming up on our footbridge of the uh, South Fork of the Holston River. All right, it's been a great hike. Let's go see how G's doing. Well, here's the man now. So, what did you do? <laughs> I charged up my portable battery and watched a few episodes of American Odyssey and checked out a couple of stores and came over here to pick up Arnie. <laughs> well, you look like you might be feeling better. Yeah, feel good. Good, well, it's been a great day. God bless everyone, and uh, we'll see you next time.